In the meantime, I want to tell you how exciting is this meeting. Myself, I had to uh, depart from all the regular time sequence because scientific news have been dropping in uh, minutes after minutes in the last uh, two days. And some of the most surprising result will be presented uh, here for the first time. I mean, there will be many, many new presentations. Again, even uh, violating the normal time sequence because uh, thanks to the goodwill uh, of Jean-Luc Puget, uh, he will uh, be announcing here for the first time practically some of the key results of the Planck mission. And we are very, very grateful for him to, to do that. He will do that this morning, shortly, shortly after the presentation of the award, which we are all very happy to deliver to him of uh, so many years of collaboration. But then he will keep during the week in public lecture and also in the evening lecture. By the way, the evening lectures are open to everyone, not only to the participant. You can bring friends, families, and, uh, and you will not pay for the public lecture. They are open to the public. And then we will have another first about the neutrino experiment. On, but absolutely for general relativity is a result which just was published a few days ago, a few hours ago, about the repetition in a grandiose scale, very grandiose scale, of the equivalence principle of Galileo Galilei. Because <laughs> Galileo Galilei did this famous experiment, maybe it was a Gedanken one, it's not clear it was a real one, dropping two objects for the Pisa Tower. And uh, the French group at Honera, we were ready to announce here the new result of the equivalence of the gravitational to the inertial mass in one part, you will hear uh, on Wednesday, the new fantastic result improving on the previous. You will hear what the improvement is. And that would have been, we consider that such an important news to put that in plenary. But then, a few days ago, something most incredible happened. That, uh, not uh, Jean-Louis knows, knows this because it was uh, 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 not uh, the experiment microscope, but there is the biggest uh, system which is uh, one neutron star, one white dwarf, and a triple system with a white dwarf. And for the first time, they are measuring the drop on the, third, on the third object on the white dwarf by the binary uh, of the neutron star, one of the denser objects in the universe, and the white dwarf, one of the lightest uh, compact object. Therefore, this is an absolute first. It's not yet uh, uh, published. Uh, but uh, we, got, we got the possibility to, uh, to speak on that on Friday because the news uh, can be announced because the paper was accepted in nature. Therefore, there is no more embargo in the last, in, in the last moment. But uh, uh, with this... Welcome. Good morning. Good morning.
Schenker, we welcome the rector of the University of Rome, Professor Eugenio Gaudio, and uh, uh, to be here with us. Grazie. So, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here and to welcome you in our University of Rome, La Sapienza. You know today, the Sapienza University of Rome is the largest university in Europe, and we are very involved from many decades in uh, astrophysics research. So, as rector, I'm very glad to warmly welcome you all to our university, which is hosting for the fourth time the Master Grossman meeting on relativistic astrophysics. This is a very exciting time for this field of research. A new era has begun with the detection of gravitational waves, the ripples in the University of Fabric of Space Time. Our university was involved in the international efforts on the direct direction of gravitational waves since 1970s, when Eduardo Amaldi pushed for starting the experimental activity in Rome. It took many years and a couple of generations of physicists to achieve this international success. Celebrated with the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2017. Gravitational waves generated by two colliding by coals have been detected for the first time in 2015, as you know. And then last year, new signal produced by two neutron stars merging together has been received by the Virg International Network. This last collision also erupted emitting light in every wavelength range, radio, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma ray, which were detected by observatories around the globe in the space. Studying the universe with these fundamentally different types of information was like observing the world with multiple types of sensory input, such as vision and hearing. It's offered the possibility of a richer understanding of the whole, whole astrophysical phenomena. During this conference, you will review these incredible results, but the range of topics that I see you will discuss is broader, growing from the classical and quantum gravitational theories to relativistic astrophysics and the looking towards the future observational missions. Distinguished speakers, I see will provide the most up-to-date reviews of recent developments in the theoretical and experimental domain. The scientific progress is based on the free exchange of information and the association of scientists. The Master Grossman meeting has been conceived since the beginning as the event where senior physicists and young researchers from all the continents of the earth have the occasion to exchange ideas build new virtual bridge and mark the progress in the field. In the past, the Marcel Grossman conference was the occasion to conceive new experiments. I like to remember once again that the French-Italian detector Virgo was born here during the fourth Marcel Grossman meeting held again in Rome in 1985 when Alain Brillé and Alberto Giazzotto met and discussed for the first time around the Minerva Fontaine in front of this building. Our wish is that also this meeting will provide the opportunity for all the participants not only to expand their knowledge and experience and to, and to interact with each other, on an unique occasion for having new ideas and conceive new experiments. As we said, we are glad to host you in the historical campus of our university. We are located near the center of Rome, not far from the most famous monuments to our town. Our wish is also that you we will experience the cultural richness of our town during the conference and profit this unique opportunity to combine science with a visit to the wonderful city of Rome. Thank you again for your presence and have a wonderful meeting. Thank you very much.
Well, we uh, thank you, uh, Magnifico Rettore, and uh, for this uh, very nice uh, introduction. And of course, uh, the, f the, first, the second meeting, my MG2 was uh, already in Rome, and therefore this follows. Uh, after so many years, uh, 30 years almost, uh, which have seen development all over the planet, visiting and coming back now uh, to Rome in these last two meetings. Rome is an uh, open city and everybody in the world is welcome to be here and enjoy not only the scientific history but also the beauty of our country. We proceed without any delay with the attribution of the uh, Marcel Grossman Award they are uh, um, uh, named after uh, Marcel Grossman, and uh, we have the granddaughter of Marcel Grossman here with us, and she's bringing the translation into English of, of her beautiful work on uh, the, uh, her, her grandfather. You will uh, uh, listen and uh, see the book uh, at the banquet in uh, uh, Palazzo Colonna on Wednesday. The prize uh, is uh, this object made by an Italian sculpture and uh, it's a special statue because usually a statue has an up and down. But uh, this object has been the, the, uh, uh, created after a mathematical solution of the Einstein equation, which is the Kerr solution. Roy Kerr has found, has published one paper uh, in his great career, which has million, uh, million of citation. And we have the great honor to have him here. And therefore I will pass uh, the the duty of, and, and these particles are just the black hole is here. Therefore, no matter how you look, it's not an up and down, it's around the black hole. Therefore, when you look at this statue, no matter how you look, it's a different uh, vision, a different <laughs> geometry, a different statue even. Therefore, I, I propose... The, the attribution of the first award to uh, Professor Jean-Loup Pouget. Uh, this award is uh, not to a person, but uh, to a collaboration, which is by far one of the most successful collaboration in uh, European science, of the mission uh, of the Planck mission. And uh, for, uh, the reading is for obtaining important constraints on the method of inflationary stage of the universe and level of primordial non-Gaussianity, measuring with unprecedented sensitivity gravitational lensing of cosmic microwave background fluctuation by large-scale structure of the universe and corresponding bipolarization of CMB. The imprint of the CMB of hot gas in galaxy clusters, getting unique information about the time of reionization of our universe and distribution and properties of the dust and magnetic field in our galaxy. You <laughs> Tu peux dire quelques mots de... Oui. It is a great honor for the Planck collaboration to receive Marcel Grossman Award for a team. On the behalf of the Planck collaboration I represent here, <coughs> I thank the, warmly the Marcel Grossman Scientific Committee for that. 
This award is for us, Planck Collaboration's recognition that cosmological observations and laboratory experiments on the largest accelerators are complementary in testing simultaneously fundamental physics, the standard model of particle physics, the description of gravity by general relativity, and the cosmological model based on them. The NASA space missions, <coughs> COBE and WMAP, and the European Planck mission, with a key contribution from the United States, have brought cosmology in the range of high precision sciences, which was predicted if the anisotropies of the cosmic microwave background could be observed with enough accuracy. After WMAP measuring with high precision the first acoustic peaks in temperature, the Planck mission brought the polarization data to a similar accuracy, giving two independent measurements of the cosmological parameters. That includes the inflation predictions, three of them, uh, and one, the gravitational waves, remaining to, to be uh, tested. The confrontation of the CMB results with observation of the large-scale structure of bionic matter in the distribution of galaxies and of the cold mass with lensing both of galaxies and the CMB and the expansion rate revealing acceleration are crucial tests of both fundamental physics and the cosmological model. There are some tensions, in fact, with these, but not of enough statistical significance to claim new physics. And this is true for the legacy Planck data, which is not yet public, which will be released in July 17th, but uh, uh, it will show that some of this tension decreased and some of the increased, but not changing uh, the, the previous statement. We will, so you will get uh, first, the very first presentation of these results at this conference. The quest for new physics is going on with more space and ground observations on the dark energy test on, on galaxies and on the CMB, and to search the polarized B modes which would trace primordial gravitational waves. And so, thanks for this award. will come out in the discussion, therefore be attentive, although the data will be published, presented officially in July, but be attentive to all the statements that jean Lou is going to do, to look into this very deep new knowledge. The other, the other award of an institution goes to Hansen Experimental Physics Laboratory, at Stanford University, which is presented to Leo Holberg, the assistant director of the, uh, of the, of the institute. And uh, <clears throat> yes, you can take the... You, uh, there is uh, uh, a long tradition of collaboration between uh, um, uh, Icranet uh, and Stanford. Actually, one of the founding members has been uh, profe uh, Professor Francis Everett, and the motivation is uh, to help uh, for having developed interdepartmental inter activities at Stanford University at the frontier of fundamental physics, astrophysics, and technology. If you can make a brief uh, statement on behalf also of Francis Certainly, certainly we'll make it brief. Um, I'm Leo Holberg. I'm the assistant director at Heppel. I had nothing to do with any of these experiments. I'm here only because Francis Everett wasn't able to travel and Peter Michelson uh, that were the key PIs on that program at Heppel. Our laboratory has been involved in space physics for some time, um, but both Peter and uh, Francis wanted to emphasize that these are worldwide collaborative efforts, and they were key contribution, particularly in, in Fermi from Italy. And so this is an award recognizing really worldwide contributions in these large missions. Thank you.
And now we have heard a lot about the CMB, uh, latest, latest resolve from Jean Lou, and he always mention the W map. W is for David Wilkinson. And Dave was a friend, a deep friend in, Sta in Princeton at the, uh, at the time of the old laboratory. Jerry Ostreicher, remember, we were on the roof uh, and, uh, 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 and uh, Wilkinson on the under uh, uh, floor, under the office of John Wheeler, and we all lived this fantastic time in Princeton. The person who carried on this uh, uh, fantastic work uh, at the time in 67, 70, and on, and on, and on, was Lyman Page, working very close to David Wilkinson. And then now he is leading the most advanced vision of the, of the universe from the Atacama uh, 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 Desert Observatory and uh, the Atacama Cosmology Telescope, which he has conceived and uh, driven to the early development and, uh, and action now. Please. Words. Yes. Uh, well, of course, th uh, thank you very much. It's, it's a great honor, uh, especially great honor with these august colleagues. Uh, let me just, just say a few words. Of course, uh, WMAP was, a, was a, a partnership between NASA Goddard and Princeton. Well, Dave Wilkinson, uh, as Remo said, the W in WMAP. Norm Jurassic, Ed Wallach, and I were working on designing the instrument and thinking about the mission. Chuck Bennett and colleagues were paving the way for a satellite that could carry the CMB payload uh, at, at Goddard. I'll tell you a bit more about that history on, on Thursday. Uh, with the emergence of the anisotropy spectrum, a, a big piece of which was done here with uh, Paolo Di Bernardis' group and the boomerang experiment, it became clear that there was a lot more to be learned from the anisotropy than we would learn just from WMAP and, and Planck. Um, so a group of us, uh, me, Suzanne Staggs, Dave Spurgel, and Mark Devlin got together and proposed the Atacama Cosmology Telescope. And well, of course, we're, we're very, we're happy. We're getting wonderful data from that, that to, to help build on this, this standard model of cosmology. And the idea there is, of course, was to measure the spectrum to, to a higher resolution than could be attained at Planck, and then to connect that all the way to, uh, to the scale of clusters. So it's, it's clear that there is still much more to be learned from both the temperature spectrum and the anisotropy spectrum. There are tests of gravity, which we're working on. Uh, the properties of neutrinos, we will, we will understand that from studying the cosmic microwave background. And of course, the search for primordial gravitational waves there's still a lot of excitement in the field, it's, uh, just a lot more to do, and uh, we can look forward to maybe future awards related to the microwave background. Again, thank you very much. <laughs> now, one of the characteristics of, uh, of our uh, uh, Marcel Grossman meeting is to bring the observation close to the theory and then close to mathematics. And we follow that path. We have seen the great observational result, but let's now turn to the homage to Rashid Sunyaya. Rashid has been uh, we have been collaborating since uh, the early days when we reached for the first time from Princeton with John Wheeler, uh, Tbilisi, and <laughs> met a, a, a small group with Lifchitz, with uh, Zeldovich, surrounded by their school. It was a fantastic moment. 
and we have been friends and developed since. And uh, in this picture, you see a young Rashid with uh, Zeldovich. It's a very beautiful picture, which tells a lot about the relation between the uh, Rashid and, uh, and Zeldovich. And also another historical moment when uh, Zeldovich, for the first time, was allowed to come out of Soviet Union. First time. Special permission. He was, after all, the father of the A-bomb and the H-bomb with Gainsbourg in Soviet Union. And uh, he came to Rome, and I had the pleasure to introduce him to the John Paul II. Even that occasion was uh, fabulous, because uh, as uh, Zeldovich was always spe special, he, 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 he came in the room, and he sat in the first row. And they said, no, you cannot sit in the first row. You, you are room uh, 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 21. Go there. No, but nobody will see. I like to be here. No, I said, no, you don't. Please, go, 21. And then after a while, before the Pope arrived, all the cardinal arrived in the first row. I said, you see, if you were sitting there, they would spot you in here. That you are not. But uh, even later, he, he, he approached the Pope, and he had a shirt. And under the short shirt, he had something. And we were all scared. You can see my eyes looking at him uh, with scare. What is going on? And he reached in front of the Pope, opened the, short, the shirt, and he had two books. And he gave it to the Pope. And the Pope said, speaking in Russian, he said, thank you. No, thank you, loud. These are 25, five, uh, they are 50 years of my work. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, the Pope kept the two books of Zeldovich, with Zeldovich in, in uh, red uh, on for all the audience. And later on, he said, was one of the most enjoyable audience I ever had. Anyway, uh, 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 Rashid, is grown in this, uh, in this sort of uh, family. And uh, he's the theoretician who, more than anybody else, with Zelovich, has given the theoretical understanding to uh, interpret this data. I cannot tell more than just this sentence for the development of theoretical tools in the scrutinizing through the CMB of the first observable electromagnetic appearance of our universe. Thank you, Rema, for kind words and remembering my mentor, Zeldovich. And I wish to say also a few words, just thank you for this award. But uh, I rem during your speech, I remembered how I was just turning from 21 to 22 uh, years. My, I was a young student, and when I joined a group of Zeldovich, and he was my mentor, I joined him half a year before the rumors about discovery of Penzias and Wilson, uh, about discovery of CMB reached Moscow. And this was a crucial moment because Zeldovich asked me, are you interested in CMB? I told certainly, and majority of people around thought that after papers of GAM, of Lifshitz, and other people, everything, yes, everything is uh, for me, everything was obvious that a lot was known. And uh, that uh, what, uh, what I planned to do is not extremely interesting. And we were enormously lucky with Zeldovich. We were competing in reality and working in parallel with Princeton, with Jim Peebles and his people. But it was possible for us to predict uh, existence of acoustic peaks, existence of baryonic acoustic oscillations, it was possible to propose method how it is possible to measure velocity 
of very, very distant objects, peculiar velocity relative to CMB at redshift, for example, one. How clusters of galaxies are moving and that universes, the clusters are moving practically together with CMB even there when in the regions of the universe which depart from us with relativistic velocities. It was possible to predict um, the uh, uh, that effect, thermal effect, to show that it's possible to detect clusters of galaxies with very hot plasma using just CMB observations. And Planck, and now uh, Atacama Cosmology Telescope, and South Pole Telescope showed they discovered more than now, I think, 2,000 clusters of galaxies just using this method. And it is enormous feeling when just simple theoretical ideas after many years, 40, 50 years, are getting confirmation that they are really observable on the sky, and they will be on the sky for the next five or 10 billion years at least. And this is very interesting on the time of on the, our lifetime scale. Uh, I am very grateful for Zeldovich because he introduced me to this field. I am very grateful to all my collaborators, but I know that nothing would be possible without, in reality, thousands of people who were working on new technologies of spacecraft, who developed extremely sensitive balloons, who and other detectors of electromagnetic radiation, uh, who were observing, building these telescopes, Atacama Cosmology Telescope at the five, uh, at the five kilometer height, or South Pole Telescope exactly on the South Pole of the globe. And uh, to all these observers, to everybody who made it is possible to see these effects on the sky, I am enormously grateful. Many thanks, and it is great that theoretical ideas is possible to prove with real observations. Many thanks for this award. And now, uh, the pure mathematics. We have the great fortune to have uh, Professor Yao with uh, 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 all over the planet because uh, he, uh, he is at Harvard, but at the same time, he has just been back from last week meeting with the president of China and uh, with very good news of his intention to power scientific research in relativistic astrophysics and collaboration worldwide and of course, uh, with also with uh, Ikrenet. But on, the, on uh, apart uh, this uh, historical presence, it was very nice to see uh, Professor Yao enjoying the visit uh, of the of the polar world, Rome, on one side and Beijing on the other one, and the intention of the new president to reconstruct this liaison ideal between Rome and uh, the Mediterranean and Beijing. And we will uh, keep collaborating on that, but also because Professor Yao has been uh, the deep, one of the deepest thinkers about uh, black holes, the mass formula of black holes, and we are planning just to enjoy his lecture and following this presentation after a moment of break and, and, and plan together with all the participants of this recipient and the ICRANET this further step of development with, uh, with uh, the People's Republic of China. And uh, of course, in addition of that, I just got to the good news that also the European Com Commission is very willing to this, uh, to strengthen even more this. Therefore, we are in an historical moment, I think, an historical moment in which the world is changing, 
But altogether, we were discussing with Professor Yao, maybe he's going.